we're in the Merry Trade Winds. There is a hurricane close by. You have the hurricane in the center and then waves radiate out from it perfectly. In our situation, we are on a beam reach with southerly winds. And you can see there's just the regular light chop coming at us. So those are just the regular swells. And if we look over here, you'll see this big dome of a cloud. So that's actually the hurricane way off in the distance. The really cool thing, from him you'll see these big, slow, undulating waves just coming. So there's one on the horizon coming at us. And it's just this really big, gentle wave. So here he comes. And then we're gonna go up. And then there's the huge trough to the next one. Now, I know some of you might think that this video makes it look like these are tiny little waves. The truth is the wind waves are about uh, about three feet tall. They're, they're nothing major. These hurricane swells, they're about 10 to 12 feet tall. So you just make sure that you are not heading into a hurricane swell. So a really old salt trick is to use a barometer. A barometer measures the air pressure that you're under. And there's two systems that are gonna exist out in the ocean. You're gonna have high pressure systems and low pressure systems. So low pressures tend to be like hurricanes, thunderstorms, stuff like that. They'll be thousand or less millibars. And then high pressure systems tend to be things where there's no wind at all, and they tend to be higher than 1,020 millibars. The trick is to lay somewhere in between the two where the winds are blowing nicely. And thanks to the Coriolis effect, you will have consistent winds in a predictable direction. So, all you need to do is have a barometer. Our barometer is mounted here in the nav station. As you can see, we keep the red marker on the 1020 line. So the 1020 is actually your ideal. And if you see that the pressure gets a little higher than that, like in our case where we're at 1022, we know that we need to turn north towards where the pressures are lower. In general, there's going to be a big high pressure system in this area and a nice low pressure system just north of it. So as you're sailing along, you follow along where your 1020 millibar line is all the way across the ocean and the winds will carry you this way. You come south and the winds get lighter. If the winds are too light, you go north and the winds get heavier. Now thanks to the Coriolis effect, all high pressure systems rotate clockwise and all low pressure systems, like a hurricane for example, rotate counterclockwise. So you have low up here and high down here and the high is going this way and the low is going this way. So if you're in the middle, you're going to be blown that way. All you're actually doing when it comes to navigating is dealing with storms. A lot of people are worried that if you don't have a motor, you can't stay perfectly on course and then you're gonna get lost at sea and bad things are gonna happen. That couldn't be further from the truth. So when you're out at sea, you just sail to the winds that you have. If the winds are taking you more north, don't fight them, just go a little more north. Later on, they will turn more south and you'll go back down and you're fine. Now you figure, our destination is currently about 1,500 miles to the east of us. So if we go a little north or a little south, it doesn't make a difference. You set your wind steering and you just sail as quickly as you can in the direction that's generally where you want to be going. Now, to not be complete nut jobs out here in the ocean, we do have Navionics on our iPad and we look at it frequently just to make sure that, you know, is this where we want to be going and stuff like that. out for on this trip is the sun. Uh, as you can see I am very pale and the sun poisons me. So I have a whole bunch of SPF protection shirts. Before I go outside I have to wear long sleeves. <laughs> Plastics in the ocean are quite a big issue. And when you vacuum pack your food in plastic, it keeps longer, so it's better for provisioning for the trip. But you run into the issue of, what do I do with this plastic? Like this had chicken in it. If we just put this in a trash bag, it's gonna stink. So we buy mayonnaise in like a big, strong, sturdy plastic jug. And then we just stuff this in it.
You can't wait on other people to be what you've been called to be. You can't wait on their affirmation. You can't wait on their approval. You can't wait on their support. Listen, listen to me, hear me. Sometimes you just gotta run and look behind you and say, everybody who wants to run, run, but I can't stop running because you're not running with me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing your dream just because somebody in your life won't chase it. You can't stop believing in yourself just because somebody in your life won't believe in you. Listen, listen to me, hear me. Listen, listen to me, hear me. You can't stop chasing the dreams of your life just because when you know, when you do it, you're going to have to do it all by yourself. One, two, three, four. currently 5.50 in the morning and it's the first time we've encountered another commercial ship. So usually we see a ship every day, every other day, somewhere around there when we're coming from the Bahamas to, uh, to Bermuda. But on this leg we've just we've seen nobody. So it's kind of comforting to see someone else out on this big ocean with you. On the AIS it says that he's about a mile and a half away from us. So we have the distance and we know from a long time ago that we weren't gonna collide. So that's one of the beautiful things about AIS. All commercial vessels like him, uh, by law, have to transmit AIS. So we received. So we saw when he was about 20 miles away that we were going to be between a mile to a mile and a half apart. And there's no scare, no panic, nothing at all. some pretty good luck in the bait department. So three flying fish actually landed on our deck. So we're just gonna put them on a hook, or one at a time, and see if we can't catch something good to eat. fish fillets and when you have someone that does surgery clean a fish you end up with just what cannot be ate eaten <laughs> so this is the internal anatomy of a fish and its skeletal system no waste nothing at all okay I am now going to prepare the fillets for good eating by poking holes with a fork and then putting various spices and lemon on it and stuff so, this allows everything to seep in. And here we have ginger, lemon, and uh, pepper. 
from Baltimore, and then I'm gonna put some basil leaves on there. Hopefully that'll make for some delicious fish later. Yes! <laughs> so good. Thank you, fish. I devoured that. It was delicious. So, um, we've been going 100 miles every single day. As of right now, we are halfway between Horta and Compass Key, which is where we originated. So, uh, that's a good feeling, but also it feels like we're going really slowly because there's just, we still have over a thousand miles to go. So, it's definitely a challenge mentally, but physically we're doing fine got a fish we ate it I mean that's pretty awesome and the cool thing is we're keeping in very close contact with the Australian couple that we met in the in Bermuda and they're keeping us updated with all of the weather where they are they're three days ahead of us so and they're quite north of us so they're we're just keeping tabs on each other and it's kind of buddy boating which is it's nice to know there's somebody else out here with us. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely a comfort to us as well as our parents back home. So an interesting thing with the weather, the weather routing programs, they work by using the forecasts and then figuring out what's the fastest way to get from here to there. Now they're really good when you're located somewhere and your destination is upwind of you because they'll figure out how to get there fastest and it really makes a huge difference. Uh, in our case, it's all downwind for us. So if we go a little north or a little south, it's all downwind. So it doesn't really justify going hundreds of miles out of the way. So one of our friends and patrons has been sending us weather routing info, which uh, when, when there's light winds or we're having a headwind, then we follow it. But then when we have conditions like this, we figure why go hundreds of miles out of the way to find this kind of wind when we can just keep going straight towards our destination. So it's kind of interesting because our friends that are way up north, they were supposed to have this wind, which is why they went there. And we felt like the wind looked good here. So just keeping an eye on the clouds and the weather systems around us, we decided let's just stay down here and, and ride it out. And it's been great. Like we've been having about 20 knots of wind where we're supposed to have less than five. And they're having two to three knots of wind where they're supposed to have 20. So it goes to show. Kind of sail the wind that you have while you have it. It's not a very comfortable day. Last night I must have gotten food poisoning from the fish or something because I was very sick for an extended period of time. And so this morning has just been squalls and then nothing and then squalls and then nothing. A whole lot of um, just being pushed and rocked around, rolled around. Right now we have the motor going just to try to give us some forward momentum through these waves that are just, mm, feel like a bathtub toy. I'm kind of exhausted and Herbie's exhausted, both had a long night. 
And, uh, yeah, some days are like this. You just gotta get through them to the next day. The winds are finally back, and we're moving again. Now, a really impressive thing, while we are out here, the wind just shifted, and we pretty much had a tailwind pushing us into the waves. But there really wasn't enough wind to keep the sails full. So they were sliding and banging, and we just weren't really going anywhere. So we started using the motor because we've been moving so fast for so long that we've, we're full charge. Because as the propeller spins, it charges the battery bank. So we're motoring along at quite a good amount of throttle, and we're barely able to do a knot into the seas. Like we'd be going along at three knots, and then we'd hit a wave and come to a complete stop. And then, you know, build up our speed again and stop. And it made me start wondering at that point, we we're using about eight horsepower equivalent. So when we have our sails up, we'll be doing six, seven, eight knots into the same conditions. It makes me wonder how much power is actually in a sail? Like, we're reefed. We're not even full sail and we're just plowing through these waves. So it's, it's quite impressive the forces that are at play when you're sailing out in the ocean. We were in the quarter berth and we heard this weird squeaking sound. And I looked into it and it turns out that one of the shivs to our pulley system for steering is seized. So the squeaking we hear is the cable actually just drawing over the shiv itself. So we're gonna get in there, free it up, and lube it up again. That way it stops squeaking like this and uh, starts spinning like it's supposed to. While squeaking is annoying, there's actually a huge, much more detrimental aspect to just ignoring this and continuing on our way. So every time that the steel cable is being pulled over the shiv, there's a lot of friction there. And that friction is going to eat away at the shiv and also eat away at the cable. And the shiv is replaceable and you can tighten it and you can kind of get away with some damage. But if the cable starts to be eaten away, the cable starts to break and fray, and then the cable snaps. And then you have no more steering. So that's a major issue. So today is the first day we've heard the squeak and that's why we are right now going to be fixing it immediately after discovering it. Being a cyclist, I love this stuff. It, it just works so great. It's finish line. It's what I use on my mountain bikes. And I use it a lot on the boat as well. So areas like this where you need good lubrication, it just does wonders. We'll just let that work itself in. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, so it's quite nasty out today. A little slower is welcome right now. One thing that has been a really huge positive note of this trip is... When we told people that we wanted to sail out and cross the ocean... Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.